What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another great episode. DJ Reacts, you know what it is. Uh, got a lot of strange things going on, so we're going to put some of that up here and see how it goes. Look at some really strange stuff. As a disclaimer, as always, this is for entertainment purposes only. Do not believe anything that I say. Do, but do not believe anything that you see on these videos. On that note, let's get into this content. Everyone on TikTok knows that the TikTok ban has nothing to do with China. It's all about Israel. Been talking to a lot of people involved with the bill on Twitter spaces, and there's one thing they all have in common. They're not on TikTok. And if they were, they would know that it's not China hashtags that are getting censored. It's Israel hashtags. And I accidentally proved this yesterday when I posted this video about how APAC is sponsoring the TikTok ban bill, and I hashtagged it with Free Palestine. See, right there, Free Palestine, Free Palestine, and it immediately got throttled, and I could tell it was gonna get no views. So, I reposted it with no hashtag, and about 12 hours later, no hashtags equals almost half a million views, and Free Palestine hashtags, 23,000 views. And despite the overt censorship of pro-Palestinian content on TikTok, Palestinian support hashtags are the most viewed of all hashtags, and Israel support hashtags are non-existent because we all see what's going on because there's two claims the lawmakers are making they're claiming that china can suppress anti-china content through suppressing hashtags for example and they're claiming they can spy on you and get your data problem is i recently made an anti-china video using all the anti-china hashtags um tiananmen square uyghur muslims i talked all about it i showed footage of tiananmen square uh we're at almost 600,000 views no suppression then my homie James Lee, who's a gangster, who you should follow, he charted out how much money all the Congress people are taking from APAC, from Israel lobby money, and it's so much money. And then he plotted it out on a graph to show that the people that are receiving more money, see x-axis is more Israel money, means you're more likely to have voted yes on the bill. And the people that voted no, they all took far less money from Israel lobbies. Oh, and real quick, the claim about them harvesting your data like you clearly don't understand the nature of cyber warfare today and you should read this book um, do a little research china's in all of our shit anyways they can have all of our data whether you outlaw an app or not and like who the fuck cares like what are they gonna do force me to buy a knockoff product on amazon like china's not gonna target u.s citizens with our data like, like you're gonna send me anti-government propaganda to subvert our american democracy like uh no need i'll make that content myself for you see government the problem is when you uh have a country where freedom of speech is literally the first amendment of your constitution your own citizens are allowed to make anti-government content when you suck ass at your job and israel really does not like when we do our freedom of speech thing and so they have paid everyone off and have come up with a scapegoat for national security to try to take tiktok away before the election but trust me everyone sees what's going on and it's only going to increase the sentiment it's only going to take more votes away from your guy joe and it's only going to strengthen palestinian resistance that's the thing about resistance. The more you oppress, the stronger resistance gets. So anyone that's still telling you that this bill is about China is really uninformed. Obviously not on TikTok. Anyone that's saying the bill is about them being able to ban any app they want is kind of missing the plot. Like, sure, maybe they could, but that's not why they're bringing it now on such a fast timeline. It's because our boy Izzy is in a real pickle and they need to do something quick and before the election. And the gloves are off. Y'all are coming for our free speech. Y'all are coming for our platforms where we talk and we share information. Like TikTok is not an app for videos of dancing kids. TikTok is an app for journalism. Most of TikTok is talking head videos like this of people sharing information. And that is why it is dangerous to them. If you're not on TikTok, I guarantee you, you have no idea what you're talking about because it is not what you've been told and it is not what you think it is. The reason why they want to ban TikTok is because things like this spread really fast. I'm gonna leave you with this clip from the director of the ADL.
what we're seeing right now is the product of them putting all their energy towards this problem fast. I, I completely agree with everything he just said. And TikTok's, uh, TikTok is scary for them just because of how fast news actually travels on TikTok versus what they're trying to program you to watch on TV. They've always been terrified of that. And, and TikTok's just another one of those platforms that, but it's gotten so big now. No, it's, it's 170 million users, I believe. And, uh, billion. But yeah, they, they've always been scared when you can get news out like this. Uh, I've been in plenty of countries uh, where they had, like, something going on within their country and they didn't want anybody to be able to show the rest of the world that you know uh one of these was turkey for instance and so turkey just shut down being able to access anything outside of turkey and china does the same thing a lot of a lot of countries do that so yeah they definitely don't want information getting out and because they want you to be programmed they want you to just Stay in your little lane and believe what they're trying to shove down your throat. Who owns the rights to the interior of the Great Pyramid? NASA. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was told by one of the guides a couple years ago that they've discovered something technological about it and they want to control it. That's spooky, man. They also own the rights to a section of the Grand Canyon. So there's a, I took a helicopter down into the Grand Canyon. They said, we can't walk to this area. I, that area I heard had some old carvings or something would be over in this area. So I started trying to walk that way. And this guy pops out of nowhere with all black on, black hat, black military outfit with no logos and an AR-15 and tells me, halt, you can't go any further. I'm like, well, why? I said, what's going on? Well, didn't they tell you you couldn't come over here? I said, well, they did. But I'm thinking, you know, I just want to see, you know, what's over here. Right. All right, all right. And he says, you can't come. I said, well, why? What? I said, can you just tell me, sir, like, why can't I come over here? He says, NASA owns the rights to this section. You can't come over here. At the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon. Do you have any theories of why that is? This got to be technological. Starts in something with space. And then also, where, where else? Chaco Canyon. Same situation. So wait a minute. What's going on here? How in the world are, what are they doing? That doesn't shock me at all. That, that does not shock me one bit with all of the crazy shit that's going on. That's kind of par for the course, if you ask me. The Rothschilds, more specifically Lord Jacob Rothschild, recently passed away on February 26 at the age of 87. Just hearing that name, Rothschild, might make some people think, oh, evil, rich, Illuminati, corrupt, New World Order, Freemason, but do you even know who they are and how they made their money? They started off as a relatively normal family, just trying to make ends meet and grow a business almost 300 years ago, with Amschel Moses Bauer opening an accounting house in Frankfurt, Germany in 1743, the early version of an accounting firm. Above the door outside his office was a sign with an eagle and a red shield on it. And the office came to be locally known as the Red Shield Firm, translated to German, Rote Shield, which eventually got shortened to Rothschild. Origin story right here. Amschel passes business down to his son, Meyer, who changed his last name from Bauer to Rothschild after the store. And this is where it all begins. Meyer was pretty business savvy and just hungry to make it big, so he wanted to scale hard. His dad's business mainly dealt with bookkeeping, dealing coins, and lending money to average Joes. Until one time, he scored a lending job with the government and got paid a fat bag for it. So he doubled down on that, focusing all of his efforts on lending money to governments and kings, which was way more profitable than lending to citizens. The loan amounts were astronomically bigger than average folk for obvious reasons. But the real cherry on top was that these loans were secured by the people, the taxpayers of the country. So when a regular Joe takes out a loan and can't pay it in time, they default on it and the loaner is left chasing after Joe until they can pay it back. Government loans are backed by taxpayer money. A government will always have a virtually endless supply of money rolling in from collected taxes that they can use to pay off their loans. So they can just raise taxes in their country to get more money if they're ever a little short on paying off a loan. In this sense, governments can never lose and neither do people who loan them money. You always hear of governments in debt trillions of dollars and might be asking yourself, in debt to who? That would be to central banks who arguably modeled this structure of non-stop government loaning from the original Rothschild firm. A bit of an infinite money glitch that won't end well for us. Meyer saw big bucks flowing in from this business model so he taught his five sons his 
his methods and sent them on an expedition across Europe. To Germany, England, France, Austria, and Italy to set up similar counting houses in each. Rinse and repeat. They quickly rose to power and became the richest bankers in each country. Having more money than all other banks in those countries combined, clearly this strategy was working beautifully. At the time, one business owning banks in multiple different countries was unheard of and they definitely made the most of it. Doing shit like funding both sides of the war and Napoleon's conquest, which is no secret. Meaning they probably did the same for the world wars and uh, even conflicts happening today. They helped Brazil pay for its liberation from Portugal. Saved the Bank of England from collapse by bailing them out. Just imagine being so rich that the most powerful country in the world at the time comes asking you for money. Pretty much funded the industrialization of America, which was a barren land of cowboys, log cabins, and natives at the time. And also helped Britain buy the Suez Canal, which connects the Mediterranean to the Indian Ocean. When Britain issued the Balfour Declaration in 1917, announcing its support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people, you know, Israel. It was addressed to Lionel Walter Rothschild, who also helped fund this move. So what's their secret? How do they keep this generational wealth growing so steadily over the centuries? Well, when Meyer, the OG businessman behind the government loans, passed away, he outlined a very specific system in his will, in which the wealth can only get passed down the male line of lineage, meaning females who married outside the family were completely left out of the money. I think you know where this is going. Because of this rule in his will, all future descendants had a tendency to marry within the family, mostly their second or even even first cousins and the occasional niece. And that's exactly how they kept it within the family to this day. It's speculated that a Rothschild may actually be the real richest person in the world, counting in the trillions, using intentional tricks of the trade, like asset hiding, trust funds, and shell companies to hide their true wealth. So while everyone's focused on Musk versus Bezos battling it out head to head for the richest person title, the real top dog is quietly sitting in the shadows, tapping their fingers together, thinking of their next move. I think that was a bit watered down compared to the video that I did on them, but yeah, good point. I mean, those are all true facts, but they are, they are evil. They do profit off of every war, after each side of every war, you know, they'll fund both sides of any war and profit from all of it. Uh, he told his son specifically to do that when uh, Mayor, uh, Meyer Rothschild did, when he sent his sons out into the, into the world. 40 well-kept secrets all U.S. slaves should be aware of. Secret number 36. A pope can abolish any law in the United States. The pope's laws are obligatory on everyone. Throughout history, ancient and modern, popes have ordered the enslavement and genocide of millions. Secret number 37. On July 7, 2009, Pope Benedict XVI issued an encyclical letter, the most authoritative document a pope can issue, calling for the establishment of a world world political authority. In other words, a new world order. Secret number 38. Wednesday, May 21st, 2008. Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton secretly attended a closed annual meeting with approximately 130 of the world's most insidiously tyrannical power broker elite, known as the Bilderberg Group. Secret number 39. Every American man, woman and child, is held as human collateral. Our birth certificate represents each of us as a living stock or livestock to be traded on the world market via the Federal Trade Commission, the IMF, and that most ancient of scams known throughout the last millennium to every oppressed country the world over as the banking and loan industry, the World Bank, with each person's value calculated at an average lifetime estimate of revenues generated via taxation. Follow for part 11. For it's a lot of good information that everybody should know in, in that video. Marissa was a young college student, blind. She needed a little financial help making the rent payments on her apartment. A colonel came by with his daughter and offered to pay part of the rent. It appeared that the girl had no past. In addition to that, she could only eat a certain food substance that was delivered mysteriously outside their apartment door. She could only drink this liquid that came in large jugs. Almost always she kept herself disguised, even indoors or outdoors, with the sunglasses and the scarf tied around her head. Her manner of speech was very unusual, too. It was mechanical and sounded robotic. And Marissa, after a time, became rather suspicious of this. She started to suspect that perhaps Rachel was not of this earth. Rachel's eyes were an avocado green, really large, and went around onto her temples. After I had my face-to-face -face meeting with Rachel, it became apparent to Rachel and to her father that they needed to come forth with a story of 
exactly what she was and how he had acquired her. He told me he enlisted in 1955 to a specialized school, which was a secret military base that was not supposed to exist. It was located a little bit north of Area 51. His job was to go out and help retrieve crashed base vehicles and their occupants. He went to this crash where he got Rachel. The other occupants were killed on impact. He thought that he could see a movement inside one of the windows. And so he went in and found what he took to be a female entity. He picked her up and, and took her out as quickly as he could. And immediately he felt a bond with her. He had to adopt her and raise her as his own daughter. The hybrids were coming from another planet and trying to fit into our society. I was shown a room on a spaceship that had decks of aquariums. There were no fish in these aquariums. They were fetuses in various stages of development and they were swimming around in this greenish liquid and, and they were kind of greenish orange looking too and they didn't look human. Rachel indicated that they would like to have me help take care of those beings. I was so horrified I told her I could not do that and at that time she told me it didn't really matter what I wanted. One day Marissa came home from school and she walked into her apartment and she looked around and all trace of Rachel was gone. She saw a note taped to the mirror that said, you know, you have been my only friend. I have enjoyed our times together so much and I have left you a gift. And that was a gift of sight. I was about to say, how did she walk into her room and look around and see everything was gone? She's blind. So how, that doesn't make any sense. Interesting story though, but you know, it just, it's weird when they say, it. and then she looks on the mirror and sees there's a note. How? She's blind. But, whatever. Interesting still, I think. 40. Well-kept secrets. All U.S. slaves should be aware of. Secret number 33. New York City is defined in the federal regulations as the United Nations, which is why Rudolph Giuliani stated on C-SPAN that New York City is the capital of the world. He was correct. For once, he told the truth. New York City, or the UN, is the capital slash government, or governing body of the NWO secret number 34. Just like Vatican City and the Financial District of London, Washington, D.C. is a sovereign city-state, with its own constitution and flag. The flag depicts three stars, one for each city-state, with Washington, D.C. representing the New World military, London representing the New World monetary system, and the Vatican representing the New World religion. Secret number 35, Great Britain is owned by the Vatican. In fact, the Pope claims to own the entire planet through the laws of conquest and discovery. Follow for part 10. Told you. Vatican City, evil, 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 and they own and control everything. The Jesuits that are behind them are, even in every inauguration you look at, you'll see Jesuits standing there while the president signs uh, those papers. So, yeah, it, it's disgusting. This is the biggest realization I had when I left the U.S. We live in the fucking matrix here. If you feel like you've been indoctrinated to be a fucking slave, it's because it's true. If your gut is telling you that this is not what life is supposed to be, it's because it's true. I promise you, all you need to do is buy a fucking flight. Get the fuck out of the U.S. Don't move, right? Just fucking go on like a two-week trip just so you can open your fucking mind. Because the reality of it is, we've all been indoctrinated since kids. And a lot of you guys who have this spiritual awakening and you're seeing the matrix for what it is, that's a good start. But you do need to get out of the U.S. to really unlock the fucking cheat code. Because that confirmation when you step out of the U.S. soil, when you're in another country, that confirmation of, oh my God, I am slaving my life away, slaps you in the fucking face. So I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you fucking hate your job, if you fucking hate your situation that you have here in the US, buy a fucking plane ticket. Fucking throw a dart at a map and fucking pick a random country and fucking fly there. Because people like me fucking talking about it on TikTok is not good enough. It's not good enough.
That's probably some of the best advice I've heard anybody give, and it is one million percent accurate. You know, uh, I always talk about the issues I had moving to the U.S., but, you know, I would also go back home a lot and to other countries in Western Europe all of the time. But every time I came back to the U.S., it seemed like things had changed. You know, I wouldn't be gone that long, but it seemed like things had changed so much and so drastically in just the small amount of time that I've been gone. There's, there's, there's new trends of evil things like, you know, school bang bangs and... Or there's new trends of police officers, bang, bang, you know, on innocent people or, you know, just a lot of stuff like in a, in a short, a very short amount of time, you know, I'd be gone a month or two and or three and would come back to just this onslaught and then the food and the water and the medical care and just everything it, it does. And when you're when you're from the U.S. and you go somewhere like Western Europe or anywhere, really, you go to anywhere, he's right. It does slap you right the fuck in the face and lets you know, hey, uh, you're in this fucking rat race in the U.S. where, you know, they might not call it propaganda, but it's propaganda uh, since birth. And you've been indoctrinated since birth. I mean, that's that's the real news right there, but people don't see it because they won't leave their comfort zone. They won't go somewhere else. You know, you don't have to go far. You, know, you can go to Mexico. Still, same thing, you know? So, yeah, that's, that's great advice right there. Apparently, Bluetooth affects red blood cells. Yeah, I've always wondered about yeah. that. Like, yeah. what, what is that doing to us? Voltage-gated calcium channels on your cell membrane, and all those actually get affected by Wi-Fi, and apparently you see like a like a change in the electrochemical balance across the actual membrane in response to things like Wi-Fi. Apparently Bluetooth affects red blood cells, but I know that I feel better when I don't have like the Wi-Fi router going or I turn off everything at night. There's kill switches in all the bedrooms. You walk into the house and it's just super clean. You know, everything's HEPA air filters, negative ion generators, no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth. Apparently Bluetooth affects... Absolutely correct. I actually have uh I actually have wave generators or vibration generators or well, they're basically frequency generators that I put on a specific hertz that actually block out not only block out uh the majority of what you know uh my wireless or anything like that is putting out but also it's it's a uh, it's giving us that healing energy, whether it's, you know, 7.83 or 852, you know, like 7.83 is probably, that will make you sleep damn near all day. It is so relaxing. Like, if you have one of those, uh, and they make smaller ones, you can just put on like a little bracelet and hold, you know, or just have it around your neck or in your pocket. They have smaller ones too, but the effects on the body is, it's real it's it's absolutely real and uh yeah it, it's good for meditation it's good for anxiety it's good for stress but the sleep is like it's phenomenal like you can't get past how how deeply you sleep with that you know i slept i fell asleep once i fell asleep <laughs> i fell asleep, i fell asleep once in the afternoon and uh just after work, I crashed for about an hour, and then uh, and then I wake up to my phone ringing, and uh, and I'm like, why is uh why is so and so calling me at six fifty two a.m. and uh, so then you know I'm making phone calls and I'm like, hey, uh, where are you at? What's going on? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, it, it's six, and you know at that time it looked like it was. 6.52 in the morning, because it's 6.52 in the evening, so dusk looked like twilight, you know, to me. And so I'm like, you know, uh, why am I getting phone calls at 6.52 in the morning? And then they were like, no, it's 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 the evening. But, but I had slept so good. It was like a massive powered nap. I slept so well 
that, you know, I could have got up and gone back to work. You know, I thought that I was about to have to, but nope, I just fell asleep for an hour. Pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, I, I do agree with all of that, and I'm very sensitive to uh, electricity also, especially my legs. I can feel it if there's a lot of it. I can feel it vibrating uh, my legs at night. I, I always have been, so I've always been real sensitive to that and wanted to do something about it. And I've done multiple things, but the frequency generators are, are the best thing. For, for me, at least. No, because I'm freaking the fuck out, guys. Um, So I just Snapchatted um, my friend, right? And I... Like, walked through, I was... And now the fucking alarm's going off. So, I walked through, I was walking through here, and whenever you get right here, you can see something fucking behind me. And I like watched it, I, I did like a playback um, before I sent it to him, right? And um, like there was like, I, uh, there was, and I, these lights were off. Yeah, um, I just got to work, and I feel like, ugh, like all day today, I felt bad. Honestly, it's less, like, a little bit. I felt bad, and I don't know. I just, like, I feel like I need to go to the doctor, but, like, I'm constantly just, like, nauseous, and I don't really know why. Like, I have tried to, like, take medicine for it and stuff but i i don't know it doesn't seem like it really does anything um and then whenever i go and i'm just like laying down and stuff like i can sleep wait did you just hear that let, let me go back a little bit Hang on, no, I'm I'm going back a little bit more because I know I fucking or right when he was walk. Yeah, let me go to right here because I know I heard something. I better hear it again. Then, whenever I go and I'm just like laying down and stuff, like I like I like, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it really does anything. Um. And then, whenever I go and I'm just, like, laying down and stuff, like, I can sleep. And whenever I sleep, it's, like, I don't, like, get rest. You know what I mean? So, I don't know what that's about. But, damn, I'm going to have to make coffee. It sucks because I don't have insurance, right? But... I don't know, I'm just like, I'm gonna have to do something, because I don't know why, it's like, I feel so bad, like, like I said, I literally can get multiple hours of sleep, and it's as if I don't, like, you know, it's like I don't sleep at all, like, I'm just, like, exhausted, so, don't know what that's about, and then today I woke up with a damn, like, bruise right here on my leg, and I'm just like, what the fuck? So, that's concerning, but, oh well. But, if you wanted to swing by, um, and say hey, like, you could, oh, I can't see shit. I also hate that they always keep this room so fucking dark. Like, come on now. But, anyways, yeah, if you wanted to swing by and say, hey, then, you know, you could. But, yeah, I'm just chilling. Just chilling. Just 
No, because I'm freaking the fuck out, guys. Yeah, I feel bad for him. He has got something attached to him. And it's saying that he's in the Appalachian Mountains. Oh, not going there. Bad for you. You better some cleansing. I can't tell what he's trying to show on these screens. I can't really see them that well, but apparently it's something him all discombobulated. definitely interesting that's a perspective i haven't heard yet that's the first like new thing that i've heard about this holy clip situation wonder how true that is it has now been 50 years since nasa otherwise known as not a space agency or never a straight answer allegedly sent six successful manned missions to the moon for these past five decades Skeptics and critical thinkers have completely exposed and debunked every aspect of these supposed moon landings, including their disappearing original Apollo video, audio, and telemetry data, their fake photographs, fake moon rocks, studio backdrops, studio props, Studio lighting, studio wires, and edited videos. Thanks to mainstream media monopolies and heavy censorship, however, the majority of the population still believes men actually walked on the moon. Now this week, in a bid to bedazzle a new generation of space junkies, NASA has allegedly sent another craft to the moon. Only this time, the NASA Artemis mission is unmanned and won't even land. That's right, 50 years of technological progress and innovation has passed since the crappy computers we had in the late 60s and early 70s, along with hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars given to NASA since then, and they still don't have the common decency to give us a good old-fashioned boon landing with trained actornauts. The fakery with the new NASA Artemis moon mission, as usual, was present right from the initial launch. Even though they try to pretend otherwise, the old adage, what goes up must come down, applies to absolutely everything, including NASA's rockets. Every projectile shot straight upwards will eventually begin to arc, form a parabola, and come right back down to Earth as evidenced by literally every rocket NASA has ever launched. These rockets are always shot with their arc facing the same direction, which just happens to be smack dab in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. NASA says, of course, that the rockets are intentionally making this parabolic course so that gravity can somehow slingshot them into outer space, a completely unevidenced claim which their fanboys and fangirls just accept without question. For the skeptical, critical thinkers among us, however, a careful examination of the photo and video evidence proves that this is impossible. The extreme arc and angle, compared to the relatively short distance these rockets take on their parabolic course, shows they are clearly coming right back down to Earth. This is also apparent by the fact that shortly after the rockets are out of view from onlookers at Cape Canaveral, NASA always changes from showing live, 
real footage, to nothing but CGI for the rest of the broadcast. Anyone watching the NASA Artemis launch live will have noticed the stark contrast from the clearly real footage being received for the first few minutes to the clearly fake CGI footage being shown for the next several hours. For the next several hours, NASA ushered in their usual brigade of high-fiving mission controllers interspersed with truly terrible computer graphics, which they never admit are fake and constantly praise and talk about as if they are watching a live video feed. Nobody bothers to ask why we can't have multiple live videos facing all directions for the entire flight. Why do we only get whatever little snippets NASA decides to share, rather than full, unedited footage from multiple angles for the entire duration of the flight? Even if it could not be broadcast live, we, the NASA taxpaying public, deserve to see the entire journey unedited from launch to landing. Of course, we have never and will never see such unedited footage, which would be simple to provide if these missions were real. After a few days, the first images and videos allegedly being sent back from the moon reached NASA, and the following footage is what they released to the public. Many of you can tell just by looking that this is not genuine and is clearly CGI, but many others will swear until they are blue in the face that this is authentic footage. The reality is, though, that it is easily proven to be fake, doctored footage with just a little knowledge of video editing software. By adjusting the brightness and contrast levels, and gradually removing the hues that comprise black from the background, small square artifacts begin to appear around the objects in the video. As you can see, the Earth, Moon, and Craft all have these markings, which are only present in doctored footage. In real, genuine, authentic footage, without any manipulation or editing, these artifacts will not appear anywhere, no matter how you adjust the hues, brightness, or contrast. This is a clear smoking gun against NASA, but not the first time they have been exposed for the same trick. The many Earthrise images NASA has released since the Apollo times up to present day have been analyzed and criticized for the exact same kind of fakery. Unfortunately, this important information continues to be swept under the conspiracy theory carpet by the manipulated masses, while charlatan organizations like NASA receive endless amounts of undue praise and tax money. Meanwhile, anyone who attempts to expose and debunk their nonsense is censored and banned. In fact, my previous two documentaries on this subject have now both been scrubbed from YouTube, but I will provide links below to the NASA Moon and Mars Landing Hoaxes, and 20 Proofs NASA Faked the Moon Landings. All good points. I can't argue with anything he said. I wish I knew exactly what star he was. Oh, that's the Sirius star. I'm gonna have to look. I've I've looked at the Sirius star before, but it didn't look like. And I have actual telescopes uh, that I think are gonna be a hell of a lot more powerful. Icon cool pics, um, even with the telephoto lens on it. But yeah, I I see I see stars. I look at stars all the time. I look at the moon. And uh, I've seen some strange things. When they launched this fake alien invasion, everybody gonna swear it's real. You know why? Because people don't know that the sky is CGI technology. I've been telling y'all this. It's not the. That's not your real sky. You see the sky behind me? That same. That same sky up there. That motherfucker is not real. All right? It's not real. I've been telling y'all that for a reason because it's being controlled. It's five layers to it. It's CGI technology. They showed you this shit in that movie Kong when he threw the motherfucking spear at the motherfucking sun, nigga. Right? They showed it right to you. But before they showed it to you in Kong, for those of you who've been listening to me in this university, y'all know from day one I've been telling y'all this. So if people don't know if that's CGI technology, 
All right, once they once they get the change in the frequency of the sky and they get the altering the layers of the sky to make it look like it's a war going on right there, that's not. All right, they make it seem like it's these huge spaceships that's in the sky, that's not. And then they're gonna actually use actual spaceships that they do have from from other um, extraterrestrial species like these insectoids and these and these greys and these other ones that they got. You know, they got they in cahoots with. Are right, they gonna make this shit look real, y'all? Listen, this is gonna be the biggest movie. Listen, this is gonna be the biggest movie they never put out, nigga. This is gonna be a, the biggest movie they ever put out. I'm saying movie for a reason because shit ain't gonna ain't real, but it's gonna look real. Listen, you you ain't better tell people that we ain't under UFO invasion. I'm telling y'all in advance. Listen, man, holographic imagery is real, man. You gonna see motherfucking aliens running down the street, all that. Be prepared for it. I told you here first. Guys, check it out. So, um, I have found that when I do super long exposures on any bright really really bright star or planet it reveals this grid pattern so i think what's happening is this scope is so powerful and um it's got such a fast focal ratio that when i do these long exposures on these really bright stars it reveals some sort of a grid pattern I know you guys have saw Hunger Games, and uh, when she shot the arrow and hit the dome, it revealed a similar pattern. Same thing in the movie King Kong. Guys, they put the truth in plain sight, knowing that most people will never see it. Look at this grid, grid-like pattern. So I had to hop on this trend when I saw people adjusting the settings in their cameras and they started seeing all these crazy things in the sky. I had to cut out the first half of this video because it was way too long, but you guys, this is crazy. What is actually going on? I keep zooming in and out because I'm just in total shock and disbelief. And then I'm looking at this tree and I'm like, okay, so the tree doesn't have it. It's like real things don't have it, but it's all over the sky. I don't know why I'm whispering. This is so crazy. And then at the end, there's like this giant T in the sky. What the fuck? All of that makes absolute perfect sense. Uh, they found out years ago that there were... Uh, computer code in the sky and in space so and this was at mit so they have found that whenever they looked uh at dark matter or the sky clouds they would always find binary computer code and even what looks like integrated circuits a lot of them in a grid so that's that's pretty par for the course it's just a lot of people don't know it but i never heard them say you know what does the code say you know you can you can um translate binary and read it you know so i've never seen them post like what it said but uh, i'd be curious to know i think everybody would be anything that comes from nature cannot be patented they're not interested in that. So, we translate that into the real world of FDA approval. Surely these drug companies aren't going to spend $20 million or more testing any substance from nature because it can't be patented. That, and of course the FDA says, it's illegal to use unless it's been tested for efficacy and safety. Now you see the, the catch-22 you're in there. Nothing from nature, regardless of how effective it might be, will ever be proven safe or effective, according to the FDA. It'll never be. Because nobody's going to spend the money to go through the test. You guys already know my thoughts on this. I, I, fuck the FDA. I don't trust them. And I'm all about natural homeopathic stuff. So all this is just right up my alley. A blind woman has regained sight following a controversial stem cell treatment. 
What's funny is that it's only controversial to the FDA. What's the matter? We didn't use drugs used by big pharma companies that pays your salary. Vanna Belton from Baltimore has been blind for more than five years, but after taking a holistic approach to retinal stem cell repair, she has regained some of her sight within two months, and every week that goes by, she, she's more and more improvement. She told me when she realized she could see the license plates, she started walking around the entire neighborhood reading them, and that for the first time since 2018, she's been able to navigate her way around without a cane. So what's the holistic solution for vision loss? What could possibly repair retinal stem cells without chemically made drugs? The formula that's so controversial contains several ingredients found in nature. I'll share a few of them with you now. More details on the product can be found on the Dr. Holistic site. The first is eyebright. Eyebright is a powerful herb that has been used in folk medicine to treat eye problems for hundreds of years, which is how it got its name. In 2014, a study by European researchers found that this centuries-old treatment had a major scientific impact. When used properly, eyebright reduces inflammation in the eye caused by blepharitis and conjunctivitis. Another ingredient is bilberry extract. Research has since found conclusive evidence that anthocyanosis, a molecule found in bilberry, has powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. It's been shown to provide protective effects against macular degeneration, glaucoma, and cataracts. In fact, in a study of people with glaucoma, taking bilberry daily improved visual function by an astounding 30%. The only thing the FDA deemed controversial is that the United States eye care market is projected to reach 200 billion by 2026. God forbid something from nature disrupts their corporate greed. That's the main thing these people are terrified of is something replacing, you know, their bullshit ass medicine and I've known about eyebright but I didn't know about those other ones and I mean that's amazing that you know that that woman was able to have her vision restored you know bit by bit but at least she knows it's working because the medical field doesn't even have anything like that you know they don't have anything to where you can actually start to see again and they could have done this a long time ago or they could have done it with frequency and vibration but they're not going to do that they're just going to give you pills and get you in this uh cyclical uh pattern you know of medication side effects more medication side effects medication and and you're just you're in this rat race this loop of just bullshit that makes no sense like when people go to psychiatrist and you know they get put on antidepressants and the psychiatrist is like well you know it's gonna take a while it's not an exact science wait what it's not an exact fucking science no it's not and that's why i dropped out of uh i was pre-med for clinical psychology uh, cl cl clinical psychology and internal medicine and uh just had a stroke right there but yeah and and that's what I saw, you know, I saw so many things that that say, you know, uh, this isn't an, an exact science and it takes a while to get you on the right combination of things. And and then the side effects, you know, for a lot of psychiatric medication is worse than what you might actually have like the side effects are you might unalive yourself or you might want to hurt others you might start hearing you know uh hearing words in your head like all kinds of crazy shit i i got out of there you know after after a couple of years of learning that but that's the whole thing you know it's like that they don't even know i mean they're just they're, they're throwing darts at a dartboard when it comes to, to psychiatry. And, uh, and I feel bad. I have a lot of friends that are on uh, psych meds that have, put on, that have been put on psych meds. And, you know, after a couple of months when their body starts to balance out because they've been on those psych meds for a while and they stop working because their tolerance is built up, then they give them more powerful stuff or switch them to something more powerful. And they're like, well, try this and, and try this and, you know, come back in three months and we'll see where you're at. All right. Still, no, you still want to people yeah, just try this one then and, and then take this one at night and let's see how that works. And then take these two in the day. It, it's, it's such, 
it's so fucked up because you're playing with people's bodies and and their minds you know and you're 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 intentionally causing side effects that you know are gonna happen but because you're getting a discount on this new pill from this drug rep you know and they're saying hey you know every so many of these that you sell will give you a cut of this it's it's legal drug dealing is what it is and it's it's horrible i could go on and on and on for that you guys know that but i'm not going to that, that that's all i'll say on it but it's it's they're full of shit all of it's full of shit like just do the natural stuff worst case scenario is the natural stuff doesn't work as well and you might have to actually go to the doctor but try the natural stuff first because there's no side effects it's not going to hurt you if it doesn't work but I've never seen anything natural not do what it was supposed to do. I've never seen that before, ever. You know, I've never seen garlic not not kill uh not kill bad things in your body and keep the good things. I've never seen garlic do that. And or antibiotics kill everything. So then you have to you have to uh you have to replenish your microbiome your gut bacteria your your good mouth bacteria your pro pro and prebiotics you have to replenish all of that because antibiotics kill all of it so yeah fuck them revealing holistic solutions the fda doesn't want you to know about you see the eye care industry is over 38 billion dollars that is a big chunk of change if you ask me but did you know in 2007 a man named Shinya Yamanaka discovered an all-natural way to repair retinal stem cells. He was even awarded the Nobel Prize, but the media and Big Pharma were completely silent. Shinya formulated a product out of plant extracts that include a stexanthin, quercetin, zeaxanthin, L-lysine, eyebright, and bilberry to restore the eyesight of 100 vision-impaired participants back to near-perfect 2020th vision. I know this because he's actually a good friend of mine. More details can be found on the Dr. Holistic site. See, that right there is amazing. That man, somebody should make a, a, a bust out of him or a statue because that's amazing. And it's even amazing that they didn't come after him like they've come after so many other doctors who do the same thing. But yeah, you know, Hats off to him, amazing work. And this is what they fear. They fear people like him coming out and doing this naturally for free. And then, you know, everybody that's having eye problems are just gonna be like, well, why am I gonna keep going through what I've been going through for all of these years with, you know, uh, with modern medicine when I can go take natural stuff from this doctor and I'm actually, permanently cured that's a word you never hear in medicine you never hear cured you know you just don't hear it look, look at any topic and tell me if you hear cured you hear in remission you hear uh uh dormant but you never hear cured and it's because they're not allowed to use that word because they can't ever guarantee a cure so and nor do they want to but they're terrified that people like this there's going to be too many people like this that's why i think it's such a beautiful thing that people are waking up now because people like this are coming out and there's going to be more of them and they're doing good stuff with natural things and they're helping people and the the big industry you know what did it say 36 billion but the last video said uh, 200 billion now so you're talking about a 200 billion dollar industry that's going to collapse in on itself because of good people doing the right thing with natural uh with natural products actually curing these issues i, I love it natural substances cannot be patented and thus do not attract the interest of pharmaceutical companies in order to be approved by the FDA, any substance, including those from nature, must be tested for efficacy and safety. 
However, it is not financially feasible for drug companies to spend the large sums of money required to test natural substances because they cannot be patented. This creates a dilemma where anything from nature, no matter how effective it may be, will never be proven safe or effective according to the FDA because no one is willing to invest the necessary funds to carry out the tests. As a result, natural remedies will always be deemed unproven and considered an ineffective cure. Allow me to make a suggestion. If you'd like to effectively treat the root cause of most diseases, I highly encourage you to get knowledgeable on natural remedies you can do from home. My partner. This is just so insane. I had to share it with everyone. And I'm not sure if I'm excited, if I'm nervous. I guess it's probably a combination of the two. But the video that you're about to watch is of the new figure one robot powered by OpenAI. And they recently partnered with BMW. Just watch. I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So, all right. So real quick, notice how the robot is speaking with a very natural, like human pauses and saying things like, um, as if it's thinking that was one of the first things that stood out to me, but let's keep going. Based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great. Can you put them there? Of course. All right, so how do you think you did? I, I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty blown away by this. And apparently BMW is currently testing the robot in one of its manufacturing facilities in South Carolina. The figure one also appears to be much farther ahead than Tesla's Optimus robot, at least from what I'm seeing. But either way, I have a feeling we'll be seeing humanoid robots being used for a variety of tasks a lot sooner than we thought. That's absolutely fucking petrifying to me. Um, especially the fact that it said, um, and it pauses like it's thinking. That's even worse than the whole mechanical thing and that de that delay that it has. You know, it just sits there after you say something and then... Sure thing. You know, it's it's really fucking creepy. Um, yeah, and the fact that they... That's an open AI bot. I've done business with open AI and I just don't trust... Uh, I don't trust, it's not that I don't trust technology, I don't trust the people with the technology, because people are all, human mistakes are the biggest things in IT, you know, if it was all mechanical, then there really couldn't be any mistakes, you know, or those mistakes would be fixed permanently, for the most part, but humans being involved human error is one of the biggest things that happens uh anywhere and humans creating this is what scares me because you know you could you could end up they're, they're trying to make it to where it's almost sentient and like that guy from google that came out 
like a year or two ago and he was saying that Google has created a sentient AI and when he was you know he was all over the news and uh and then I believed uh, they unalived him I know Google fired him but he he was like this needs to get out there people need to see that Google has created a sentient AI and the problem with that is once you give an AI the perception of happiness or joy what happens when they get the perception of uh, perception of anger rage hatred that's the other that's the other part you know so and it from what i've heard uh google's already done it lots of places have done it but there needs to be like a specific system that especially when it comes to ethics of you know what can this thing do you know don't try to make it look more human because that's even creepier to humans you know at least if we know if, if it looks like a robot acts like a robot at least we don't look at it as human but humans are fallible very much so uh extremely fallible so don't create children ai robots and for adopted parent you know that there's a whole ethics behind that that has to be you know completely written in stone like you don't go past this point this point is not allowed and i don't think that exists yet that it doesn't seem to exist because you see them you know uh darpa has been weaponizing them for ages now bmw's got this one you know it's just it's a scary it's a scary road ahead to think about if there's no kind of uh ethical standard that's written in stone to govern what you're allowed to do with these do you guys know the number one outcome or the number one indicator for how children grow up to thrive whether or not they actually do i thought it was the daddy in the house absolutely not What's believe that? it or not it is the quality of their mother's happiness. Wow. wow. Damn. The, qua <laughs> the quality of their mother's happiness is the number one indicator as to whether or not a child will grow up to thrive. Because if you have a depressed mother, if you have an anxious mother, if you have a mother with post-traumatic stress disorder who is having to disconnect from her own body, she cannot show up to nurture you. She cannot show up to support you. She cannot fully step into that space. And what she will teach you about being in relationships with other people, whether you can trust them, whether you can trust yourself, mm. whether you can actually be committed and connected to somebody and know that they will reciprocate that to you in a healthy way, she teaches you that not through her words, but through her actions. Mm. And so what I will say to you, sis, is that you have to decide for yourself how you want your children not to just grow up in your house, but to grow up in this world. Because you are teaching them that right now through how you are living your life and showing them how life is supposed to be in this roof with this man absolutely true and absolutely beautifully said yeah, i love that and uh, i've seen that time and time again to be true so yeah i'm with it know always look at what animals are doing animals are the number one thing you should look at to see what's going on when something like this is going on 
that means you know it looks like their equilibrium is messed up it look, looks like they they don't know which way is up or down and that's serious and i've seen videos of other animals doing the exact same thing and that's a serious that's a serious indication that either something has happened and we just haven't seen it yet or something big is about to happen but always pay attention to what the animals Stop freaking out about the solar eclipse happening on April 8th. It does not mean Jesus is coming back. Brothers and sisters in Christ, are y'all really forgetting about what it says in Matthew 24, 36? But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. And then in Matthew 25, 13, Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. No human being knows when Jesus is coming back. We don't know what date. We don't know what hour. We don't know what time. We don't know what time of day. No, 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 no. The only thing we know is that when Jesus comes back, one of the first things that will happen, that we will know, is that Jesus will come back and pick up his children to heaven with him. That is how we know when he is coming back. You can point out all these signs that you want, all the signs that you see, but it doesn't mean Jesus is coming back. We don't know, but we do have to be prepared. I wasn't really concerned with what he was talking about. I'm just shocked that that voice came out of him. Did you guys hear that? That voice is, he's a baritone for sure. I did not expect that. Kind of reminds me of, I don't know if some of you are old enough to remember the dude that sang Chocolate Rain. That's what... <laughs> That's what he reminded me of. Super deep baritone voice that nobody expects. I don't know why schools are closed, why the National Guard is being deployed but for, for the April 8th eclipse, but whatever it is, it's going to be big. And one thing that I am doing is I'm trying to prepare. I would rather be more prepared and nothing happened than not be prepared and shit hits the fan you know so it's really strange it's really really strange and i'm wondering if they're preparing for the earthquakes you know that fault line that's going through oklahoma the path that it's taking when everybody's talking about the tav you know uh looks like the letter a in hebrew uh for i forget i think it's alpha or something but yeah i mean it's it's strange but the earthquakes like when this eclipse last happened uh the full total full total solar eclipse last time in 1877 two weeks prior to it happening those earthquakes happened and it seems like they're preparing for that again so i don't know i'm just trying to you know see what i can see on it but I really don't know.